Good afternoon. How are you today? I hope you've been very well. Today's video is very different. It's a story time. It's probably my first story time, unless I've done something and I've forgotten about it. And I think it's important that I tell this story now. For me personally, because of the nostalgic time in which this story took place but also because if I don't do it now it's gonna nag at me like it's been nagging at me for the last year so I'm doing this in the hope that it helps someone that it brings someone maybe strength or courage on the off chance that they need to hear it my Assumption is that if you find this video, it's because you're looking for it. So that's why I'm making it. Today is the 18th of March, 2024. As of Thursday, which is the 21st of March, eight years ago, I had a brain hemorrhage. And it was caused by an AVM, or arteriovenous malformation. This one event kickstarted a roller coaster of other events in my life and one of the main reasons i want to make this video is because when my parents were looking for answers i was about to say when we were looking for answers but i was in a coma so when my parents were looking for answers they found none and since i've recovered and I've been able to say that I've recovered. My story has helped th four people that I know of. So now I figured since there is a small platform happening in my name, this is where it makes the difference more than it already has. So let's begin. Eight years ago this Thursday, March 21st, 2016, I had an AVM. It was a cluster of veins and arteries that formed and then malformed in my brain, on the right side of my brain. And the rupture caused a bleed so extreme that I nearly died that night. And on the 22nd of March, I went in for emergency brain surgery, which saved my life. For the next week and a half or so of that, I would have been in a coma. I know for a fact that I woke up on April 4th because I wrote a diary entry saying, I'm going to walk out of here. The reason this was so significant is because when I woke up, I was half paralyzed on the left side of my body and half blind on the left half of each eye. I had lost my sight. I had also memory loss from the period of time of the hemorrhage to where I was and trying to figure out what was happening so that whole memory was lost um, and I don't think my speech was too impaired I think the worst thing that happened to my speech is because my tongue was half paralyzed and my face was half paralyzed that's why I was having speech difficulties but I recovered when I was learning how to walk again, learning how to speak again, learning how to read again, because while I was understanding things, focusing on letters on a page was difficult when I couldn't focus on those letters. So I can't remember what it's called now, but when you're reading something, both your eyes are focusing on that thing, but when you've lost the left half, you cannot navigate what you're looking at. And I was missing half the page and that was hard. I was in hospital for about two months recovering. It was training every day from like psychological training and emotional training, physical training, cognitive training, using my left arm as my right arm until I could use my left arm again. Speech therapy, um, I forgot the word for it now, but when they recite to you something and then you answer questions based on it, 
dictation things. I would write things down when they would tell me them. So it was a, it was a whole thing. It was like redoing uh, primary school fast course. I'm going to skip over a few things. I had a near death experience when the hemorrhage was happening. I had a near death experience. I did hear and remember things from my coma. And there were very vivid dreams that happened. I'm going to skim over that because that's not the point of this video. But if you're someone who's interested in stuff like that, I could talk about it another time. But for the sake of my healing and my therapy and my training. I don't know how to word this. Not being able to walk as a dancer, it was like soul crushing. Not being able to imagine things because I was impacted here on the right side of my brain is where I was told creativity, imagination and all that stuff happens. Not being able to imagine things to pick up a pencil and draw as an artist impacted me deeply. And it was very easy to come to the conclusion of I am broken. I am sick. Why is this happening to me? Am I going to get better? What did I do wrong? All of these thoughts. And you don't have to have gone through something so, uh, I don't know, catastrophic, dramatic, drastic to go through these emotions because I am about 104% sure every single person has felt one of these things at least once. I had a whole team of doctors, nurses, physios, uh, speech therapists, other kinds of therapists helping me out and my friends and my family by my side telling me, it's not your fault. You did nothing wrong. You could have done nothing to I don't know, defend from this. You could have done nothing to prevent this. All you can do now is look at your situation and fight. And in fact, when I was coming to, I guess I wasn't coming to consciousness. I was conscious at this point. I was awake after my coma. My neurosurgeon sat down and he said to me, this is what's happened. Whatever I've just told you, he said, this is what's happened. How do you feel? And at first I was like, no, this kind of stuff, you know, it doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. And he goes, it did happen. And you can recover, but you need to fight from now. And you need to really fight for it. And so began my journey, everyday training of all the things that I told you. And I fought like hell. A few weeks later, on April 17th, I was still in hospital and it was my 21st birthday. And on this day, I lost it. I broke down. I started crying. I think before that, like there were a couple tears, but it was tears of like fear, tears of pain, of frustration on my birthday. Tears of defeat. On my birthday, I started asking, what did I do wrong? All those things started coming into my mind and I get emotional about it now because I remember those feelings. What did I do wrong? Why is this happening to me? All of these feelings, I couldn't stop them. You don't, you don't stop these feelings. You can't stop those thoughts, right? And if you've had those thoughts, you understand. It's, it doesn't feel like they're your thoughts, but you feel them as though they are your thoughts. And there was a nurse there. She was roughly my age. She, I think, was Greek or half Greek as well. So she was speaking to my parents to calm them down and keep them happy, you know, while I was training and trying to get better. And she said to my mum, who then later agreed to come and tell me herself, that there was a girl a few months, maybe six months before I came into the hospital, she suffered something similar. I don't know if it was an AVM or if it was some other kind of trauma to the brain. She walked out of here. 
This nurse told me that while the girl walked out with a crutch and a sling, or like her arm was in a sling, she walked out. She didn't tell me the girl's name. She didn't give me any false hope and she wasn't like, she did it and you can too. She just said to me, she walked out of here. You know, do with that what you will. She didn't have to say because that was the implication. Do with that what you will. She got better. And then I started fighting harder. By this point, I remember I could walk. I needed to have nurses kind of on me at the time. I could walk a little bit and it was really hard. I couldn't yet climb stairs. I couldn't run. I couldn't jump. Nothing like that. I could just walk with the comfort of knowing I was held by nurses. Before that, I was using a bracket and just leaning on it and pulling my legs forward, left, right with gravity and momentum and stuff. But by this point, I was walking again. And while the training didn't get easier, because the better I got at something, the harder the training got. So when I started walking comfortably again, we started jogging. Jogging was hard. When we started jogging and I got comfortable with that, we were sprinting. Then we were jumping, which, God, let me tell you, jumping is scary when you can't feel your body. Hopping, nightmare. Climbing stairs, embarrassing. <laughs> but it got harder. So when you feel like you've achieved something, you're, it's like taking two steps forward and one step back, which isn't the reality. But that's what was happening in my mind. Like, okay, I got here, but I still can't do this. You know, I can, I can read this excerpt from a kindergartner's level of reading, but I can't remember it enough to explain to you in my own words what it was about. I'm looking at drawings of 3D shapes, but my eyes aren't seeing 3D shapes. So it was frustrating and like, oh, I couldn't get through the fact that I was not succeeding. But every night, I remembered that story that the girl that was here six months ago, or however many months ago, she walked out of here. And I had that in the back of my head. If she can do it, it wasn't if she can do it, so can I. Because there was never any comparison between what this girl went through and what I was going through. That never, my mind never went there. Instead, it was, if she can do it, it can be done. If someone else had something similar to me, it means that this isn't new. It means that I can overcome this and I can get better because it has been done, which means it can be done again. And that was my motivation. That one success story was essentially all I needed to get out of bed every day. And it got to the point where I was making jokes with my physios and my occupational therapists, my speech therapists. My physio would come in every morning at 7 a.m., get up. And I'd be like, no, get up, Eliana, get up. I don't want to get up, get up now. He'd come in earlier the next day. Are you up yet? I was, but ugh, I hated it. I hated physical therapy. And they maintained this humor with me because they understood, they recognized this is my personality. I'm going to joke. I'm going to be sassy about it. I'm going to get up and I'm going to work to the bone. And they used that to the advantage of my recovery. They would joke with me constantly. So when I say I had a whole team of people behind me, this team of medical professionals were able to assess my personality and work with it. They were like, okay, this girl works best when there is humor, when there is grit, when there is tough love, and when there is honesty. There was no false hope anywhere. So when I'm making this video, I don't want there to be any false hope. I want to make this video to make it clear that sometimes a success story is all you need. In my case, while I was in a coma, while I was... God, before that, before I went in for surgery, after they brought me into emergencies, my neurosurgeon came in and he said to my parents, again, I wasn't aware of this, this is what my parents told me, he told them, this is what's happening and I need you to sign these forms so I can operate first thing in the morning. 
And my parents, like, at the time, were like, what, what are the odds? And he said, she either dies within the hour or you sign these papers, we do the surgery, and she has a 50% chance of not dying tomorrow. And obviously, like, there are other questions. What what state will she be in? Will, you know, what, what's going to happen? And the answer is always, we don't know. Because you can't know. You can't know how somebody's surgery is going to affect them. You can't know how somebody's body will respond, right? So the fear of that on top of the fact that I could die within the hour or you sign these papers for a very risky surgery and on top of that it was advised that they don't google what an AVM is they don't google brain hemorrhages they don't google success rates because I can tell you now after having recovered and googling it myself there's not that much good news out there it's all a nightmare. It's all, oh, here's a case of this kid who had this thing and they died. Here's a case of this kid who had this thing and was paralyzed. There is no real success story. And it's for a good reason. You don't want to give people false hope. And I understand that. I do. But to the person who's going through it, it isn't false hope. It's... it's the light at the end of the tunnel. It means that it can be done. You are not a hopeless case. You are not going to die here. And I needed that story. Because as much as I want to say, yeah, um, I went through this thing and it was hard and I did it. I didn't do it because I knew I could do it. I did it because I had no choice. Because when you're in a situation, and this goes with anything that you go through, or everything that you go through, you have no idea how strong you are until that's all you have. And when they told me this story of the girl that, you know, walked out of hospital despite being paralyzed, it was when I had already started walking again. They didn't tell me before I started learning how to walk. I was walking. I was just defeated. Because who wants to spend their 21st birthday who wants to spend any kind of birthday, any kind of time in a hospital not knowing when they're going to get out because they are under severe training schedules, not knowing what's happening to them, not exactly being told because of the false hope thing. And you're 21. I had a party as well planned for that night. And I had to come to the realization like I'm not going home for that party. Which turned out okay because all the people I invited came to hospital to surprise me for my birthday and it will be probably the best birthday that I've ever had it will be that one I'll remember it forever so I want to make this video did I skip over some stuff no I want to make this video because after I recovered and I am not paralyzed. That sounded like I was going to say I am still paralyzed. No, I'm not paralyzed anymore. I'm back at dancing. You know, I'm still half blind. The left half of each of my eyes, the sight is gone. In the last eight years, it hasn't really gotten better. I did have eye surgery that was so I didn't have to wear glasses, but the sight is still missing from the left side. And recently, I'm seeing light and shadow on this side so I can tell when it's too bright because my eyes are reacting because they can see light coming from that side which is exciting to me because this is new and since light is all we need to see anyway and the only thing that happens between the light we see and the shapes and colors and textures it takes is the part in your brain that forms its pathways so this gives me hope that it's not dead yet. There's still light coming through. And if there is a way to train the parts of my brain that were burnt, um, the cells that were burnt in the incident, if it gives me hope, I'm taking it. And after I had recovered, my mom works in a hospital. And so does my auntie in Greece. They work in hospitals. There was a girl in hospital, in the hospital that my mom works at. And 
very similar thing happened to her. It was still an AVM, but it was in a different place. And her family situation was very similar. Immigrant family, parents had no idea what was going on. English was their second language as well. And they were frantic because they were told the same things. You know, we can't tell you anything. Don't Google anything. After the girl woke up, she had different uh, symptoms to what I had. But she, she was responsive and she was understanding and responding in the way that she could respond. Not with words, but with nodding her head and all these things. And my mum was able to say to her, because she was getting to that stage where she was losing hope. And my mum was able to say to her, the same thing happened to my daughter about a year ago. She was in a hospital bed just like this. And she was doing the same recovery. And when the parents asked, where's your daughter now? Sorry, I get emotional because it's such a huge thing. When they asked, where's your daughter now? My mum was able to say she's in Canada, finishing her last year at uni. And the reason I get so emotional is because the look in this girl's eyes, my mum said, it brought her so much hope. That she looked at her parents she looked at her boyfriend and she was like yes because that's the story she needed to hear and that is such an honor to feel that my story my strength that i needed more than anything when someone else gave me hope i was able to give hope to someone else and apparently there was another girl in hospital that my mum said the same thing to, so that's two so far. And there was a boy in Greece whom I've met, and my auntie told him, I have a niece. She lives in Australia, she's been travelling, she finished uni, this was like two or so years afterward as well. I met him that year, and he, he hugged me and he said the same thing, thank you for your courage. Or he, I missed a story, okay. I'll go back and I'll say that story too. He said, thank you for your courage because you gave me courage and I was able to fight. The story that I missed, a friend of a friend of mine, roughly around the time where I had my incident, he was diagnosed with type two diabetes. We are the same age. We were 20, I was 20 when this happened. He was maybe 20, 21 and it was devastating. From what I heard, again, I was in hospital. From what I heard, it was devastating. He was losing his mind. He didn't know how to live a life with this new condition because it was new to him. It was scary. And a year later, when I had recovered and we all went camping, he came up to me and he told me his story. And he thanked me one more time for my courage and my strength because it gave him perspective and it gave him strength. And this, he had, his condition had nothing to do with mine. These are two completely different stories now. It did happen before the boy in Greece, but I did that in reverse. The point is, his story was not my story. I couldn't give him the light at the end of the tunnel in the way that I could to the other people, in the way that that girl before me gave to me. But something happened in my story that gave him perspective and it changed his mind and then he has his own success story and his success story now can be shared with others and that's why I want to make this video because if you're looking for courage or hope or strength or anything like along those lines you're going to find videos like this, especially if you've had an AVM and or someone in your family, I should say, has had an AVM or one of your friends and you've been told to not search it. You are going to find very unsuccessful stories. And I want to be here to say that, yes, while the odds are not. They're not exactly favorable. You need to want to fight. And you can find that strength. When it's all you have, use it. 
I think it's important to get that message across. Because without that girl, without the nurse telling me about that girl before me, would I have succeeded? Would I have survived? Would I have fallen into the deep dark of my mind and just, what have I done? What have I done to deserve this? It's so easy to fall into that hole. Once you fall into that hole, you could be stuck in there forever. You could become a victim of your own life without even realizing. That's how, when I was in high school, that's how I fell into depression. You, you fall into that hole and you get stuck. And sometimes there is, there is no visual way out that you can see. But it's the people around you that inspire you, right? It's, it's the stories that you hear, it's the perspective that changes until you realize, I don't want to be stuck in here. I need to fight. And while I had that, when my neurosurgeon told me what was up, I had that straight away. You know, after I kind of freaked out a little and tried to deny that that happened to me, I said to him, what do I have to do? And he said, you need to fight for it. So I knew that and I was ready to take that step, but I did get defeated because two weeks later, and it was very little success, I did get defeated. And I'm here to tell you that I know, I know it's hard and I know it sucks, but you don't know how strong you are until being strong is all you have. And you're the only one that can really pull yourself out of it. And that's not to say what's happening to you isn't hard. That's not to say the odds aren't against you. What it is to say is that you've got this. And I think that's a very important message. And I knew, I knew that I wanted to start YouTube when I started doing makeup. I knew because there were so many cool things that I was learning that I wanted to share, like special effects stuff. We'll get into it. But when I was in hospital, which I was still like I was in the middle of college. I was in hospital and I realized I was going to start YouTube anyway. I'm going to use this platform to the most that I can. Yeah, I'll teach some fun things about makeup, we can talk about paint, we can have coffee together, but this is something that is worth sharing because of what it can do for someone else, because of what it did for me. And I think if any kind of thing can come from a platform, it's something like this. I also wanted to say that with whatever you go through and however you come through it and succeed and you know survive it, and I'm sure whatever you go through isn't the first thing you've ever gone through. Everyone's constantly is going through things. It's the game of life, right? When you succeed at something, when you survive something, how much greener is it? When you can sit back and exhale and be like, oh God, I did that. I did it. I survived. <sighs> you know what I mean? And since I got out of hospital, which by the way, when I started seeing changes, when I started being good at my cognitive training and my speech therapy, when I started running again and doing squats again, the momentum was building so fast that my time in hospital shrunk down to two months. I was only in there for two months. And at the time, it was it was so much time because in, in my storytelling, this happened in March. I turned 21. It feels to me and it felt to me at the time that I lost a whole year. Looking back at it now, eight years later, it was two months of my life. And it was the hardest, the hardest two months of my life that I can look back on and say, I made it because I succeeded through that, which by the way, makes it so much easier when something else happens. You're like, okay, you know what? I can do this because when I had to do that, I did that and I survived. And the grass is, <coughs> excuse me. 
the grass is greener in the sense that obviously like you're better and you've, you've made it through and whatever but everything that I wanted and again we can talk about this on another video if it's something you're interested in if you care about near-death experiences and stuff what was happening in my mind while I was having the hemorrhage while I was on the ground was it's like my body was screaming at me to get up because I've achieved none of the things that I wanted to achieve let me tell you something I wanted to finish school since I left hospital I went back to college and I finished college I went back to uni and I finished uni my last year of uni I spent in Canada I traveled I lived in Canada for about a year I also traveled to Fiji yeah I traveled to Greece I've been to Greece twice since then you know I moved out of home I live in the city in Sydney I've gotten my dream job which if you don't know much about what happens in Sydney, we have this light festival every winter called Vivid. I'm working on Vivid. My job is to rig lights and set up lights around the city on the Harbour Bridge at the Lunar Park in the CBD. Rigging lights and setting up for that festival, which I'll show, I'll show you when it's ready. That's what I wanted to do. That's why I went to uni. And I'm doing it now. And on top of that, I wanted to start a YouTube channel and I didn't have the courage because I was shy. And now it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm doing it. I started doing it because I survived death. And it's, it's become like, I say it now with a smile because it's become a joke. And like, I'll say it with my friends now. Like, what can't I do? I've survived death, which is, it's funny now. It wasn't funny at the time. It was terrifying at the time. But when something like that turns from being so morbid and like don't talk about it because it's scary and it's sad and you don't want to i was triggered by stuff like that you can ask any of my friends i was triggered i was triggered because i still couldn't see i still can't see and they forget to stand on the side that i can see and they're like oh l i'm so sorry but they're mad about it because i get annoying but at the time it was hard it will get better and you can do it and I know some cases it's very hard to see that you can do it because I couldn't see it either. And success looks different in different forms as well. Success could be just getting into the mindset. Success could be just emotionally overcoming something. Because for me, yeah, being able to walk was a success, but it was also muscle memory. It was also constant training every single day, every single day for five hours a day for two months, training, and then outpatient therapy training. That was one thing, dealing with the fact mentally and emotionally that I was a dancer who could not walk, that needed more time. So every everything that you go through, whether it's emotional, psychological, you know, physical, anything that you go through, you can do it. And I wanted this video to be a success story. For whoever finds it, for whoever's looking for it, it's here. And I think ultimately everything happens for a reason. I was given the story of somebody else's success because I wanted to succeed and I needed that push. My story helped others that I know of I don't know who it's helped that I don't know of, because, you know, people talk. But it helped others, and they succeeded. You know, and it's it happens all the time. Somebody else might think they're struggling through something alone, and all they need to hear is, oh, I went through that too. And that's such a weight that's lifted off the chest. It's such a weight that just evaporates when you know that you're not the only one. So... that that's why i'm talking about it here and i actually i have a favor to ask because again if you found this video you're looking for it and if others find it they're looking for something too so while my story might relate and resonate with some people i've only been through this version of this story to talk about right i haven't 
gone through a lot of things that a lot of people struggle with. And it would be a nightmare to take on everything, right? We all go through something that someone else might need to hear. So the favor I have to ask of you is, if you would like, and if you can, write your story in my comments. Because someone might be looking for hope in someone else's story, and you might be the hope for them too. And I want this platform that I have to grow based on the support that we can give to each other because I know how important it is. And granted, yeah, again, I do makeup, I do art, but I do art because it's, it's the creative part of me. And that creative part of me has no way to express this than through words. I wanted this video to be something very different to all of my other videos because this is like I haven't been able to talk about this it's been eight years on Thursday for me this video will go up the Friday so it's been it, it feels both another lifetime ago and just yesterday and to get to this point where I can talk about what happened very lightly like I will say I haven't gone into detail about the absolute struggle of not being able to see and bumping into poles and stuff because <laughs> that sucked as well that was the worst but I think to keep things very light yeah it sucked and if this is something that you're going through I'm, I'm sorry that you're suffering I really am, but you can do it, not because I did it, but because it can be done. And again, I don't want to shadow anyone else's stories by saying whatever else you're going through, you can do it too. No, that's not my place. That's why I ask, write your stories. I'd like to read them too. Yeah. Thank you for listening.